day 15. Toy touch sensitive capacitive organ. This is a, a simple circuit, it's essentially the um, remarkable C beeper which you've seen me talk about before from Charles Wenzel. Um, this is my one that I use for you know, various tracing out different circuits and um, this is almost as a continuity beeper even though it's not really a continuity beeper. Anyway, the generally the, the amount of capacitance across the uh, the output changes the frequency, smaller capacitance and this higher frequency. So what I did is I arranged a bunch of fixed capacitances in a sequence that produces musical notes or something approximating them anyway. Um, I had fiddled around with some of the values a little bit but essentially it's the same circuit. Um, the actual implementation is quite simple. As you see here, this is the circuit. I actually built the um, this little hack of the Curious C beeper because I wanted one for work and then the idea occurred to me sometime in the afternoon that oh, maybe I should you know, build a musical instrument out of it because I was fiddling with the output and it was making various tones. So that's what I did. I spent quite a bit of time actually calculating and um, you know, measuring the, the general capacitance to uh, frequency relationship and I produced a graph and it's not even remotely linear or logarithmic. So I sat down with a um, a variable capacitor and I produced a whole bunch of capacitance values that would uh, produce you know something approaching the normal tuning of a of a uh, of an organ or a piano and funnily enough when I actually sat down to, to build the device like this laid out as a keyboard and I started sticking the values on there I found that the fine tuning didn't really sound any better than just using the E12 series so you've got almost two decades here of E12 series it starts from 470 picos goes up to uh, 27 picos and it produces something vaguely like sound and music uh, I'm not going to embarrass myself by attempting to play it I have zero musical skills but uh, it does make yeah, appropriate sounds can do this with one hand, it's a little tricky On the back I've put a strip of copper and that's ground so that you can pinch it and these contacts, you know, they don't make contact with that, you just bridge them with your fingers another thing is you can touch the ground point here and it's, well vaguely in tune. You could spend more time, in fact you could use a trimmer for every cap if you wanted to and obviously the capacitance of your body changes a little bit with pressure so it's a little bit chirpy when you first make contact interestingly enough um, I found some people it doesn't seem to work properly for at all I don't know if that's a difference in body composition or conductivity of their skin we, we tried wetting their skin and drying their skin and various other things and um, maybe they're just fundamentally more lossy, which suggests that this circuit might actually have the ability as, a, as an impedance analyzer to measure body composition as well. It's maybe something I should play with later. Alternatively, if you want more precise frequencies, you can use a, uh, a stylus, but the kind of, well, you know, it does away with the, the nice feature of being able to use your fingers, but by using a lead, you know, you get much more exact frequencies and a little bit more control about exactly you know when the frequency starts and stops whereas you know if I'm but yeah you know, it's a great noise maker maybe it's something you'd make for the you know the kids for Christmas although you'd probably hate yourself if you actually built it and gave it to them because it makes some really bizarre sounds you can um, you know it's a bit like a circuit bending kind of thing. It makes squeaky noises depending on where you touch it and uh, you can vaguely make music with it which makes it kind of fun. Um, one thing I thought about doing is having say two strips one one you know fairly continuous strip and another one that was tapered from a, a point to a getting wider so you could slide up and down like a, a kind of like a slide whistle just using your fingers maybe with um, you know I've used capped on tape here to hold things down while I was soldering and, and solder mask stuff, but you could make it so that you know your body was the the thing that was making the the bridge between the the larger contact and the smaller contact, and the the more area that was covered by your flesh would give you more capacitance. So that might work. I haven't actually tried it, but I think in principle it would work. 
Uh, there's a couple of other things. I mean, obviously variable capacitors, so you could have a, a sliding trombone kind of a capacitor. Uh, it's not kind of like a slide whistly kind of a thing. Uh, lots of things you could try, but the, the general you know, circuit's very simple, and you might want to build one anyway for the Curious CB for an I, I threw this together out of junk in the junk box at work today, and it took, well, you know, 20 minutes maybe, something like that. Uh, yeah, this one's designed for 4.5 volts. The original Curious CB, I think, was designed for a different voltage than that. Maybe for a mercury cell, actually, that's not available anymore. The, um, the alternative one that I've seen on the web was designed for somewhere a little bit less than that, because I think it was nickel metal hydride batteries that it was designed for. But anyway, it's just a matter of playing around with these resistors here. And what you can get the current down to... A Below, you know, yeah, below 20 microamperes, down to about 10 microamperes, is somewhere between 10 and 20 is good. Um, again, it really only depends on the battery life, and the green LED will just it'll start to turn on if this uh, if this is too large. That's uh, it's purely a matter of taste, though. I mean, this thing requires no off switch, which is really cool. Sitting here now, it's pulling virtually no current. It's not until you actually make it make sound that that it starts pulling current. Sounding, it pulls about 1.5 to 2 milliamps and yeah not sounding 10 15 microamperes so the batteries will basically last their shelf life if you're not touching it which makes it kind of cool as well um anyway yeah this is a quick one i'm gonna go get some sleep because i'm feeling rather tired but uh yeah please um send me any you know anything any emails any comments you'd like me to uh, have a look at some people I know have sent me some circuits that uh, I want to try actually they've got some interesting ideas and I've been asked a whole bunch of different questions particularly about uh, you know what I would recommend for a, a basic range for RF circuits uh, components and tools and things like that so I might spend a day rather than doing a project just talking about some of those and answering some of those rather than just sending individual emails and doing some comments I can point out some things that I've got here in the shack and some of the decisions I've made. Uh, whether or not they're appropriate for you, I don't know, but uh, maybe you'll find it interesting. Alrighty, that's all for tonight. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.